St. Petersburg, there has never been anything in city history like Rick vs. Rick. For the first time in the strong mayor era, two mayors battled each other for city hall. They were veteran politicians who brought deep pockets, residual anger from the 2016 presidential election, and their own animus for each other to this race. What resulted was perhaps the ugliest, and definitely the most expensive, mayoral race in modern St. Petersburg history. The primary was decided by just 70 votes, and after a Hurricane Irma imposed break, the attack ads flew even faster. What would the general election be like? Turns out, not that close. Incumbent Mayor Rick Kreisman prevailed on Tuesday night, winning 51.6% of the vote and completing the comeback he started in August, after spending the summer trailing in fundraising in the polls. Election Day 2017, get the latest news and results from the Times Bay Times. Former Mayor Rick Baker won 48.4% of the vote, falling short of his bid for a third term in office. Cheers erupted at Kreisman's watch party at Nova 535 as the early returns showed him in control of what had been a closely contested race for months. We can now move forward, the mayor said. We can now finish what we've started. Kreisman said the city proved its essential spirit with his victory. We embrace light and love here, he said. We drive out darkness and division. This is evident every single day, but especially tonight. Baker, who served as mayor from 2001 to 10, conceded just before 8 p.m. We ran a very vigorous race that we can be very proud of, he said. We were honest in our dealings, although we were vigorous and we left nothing on the field. Unfortunately, we fell short tonight, and while I am saddened for the city that we love, St. Pete is still an incredible place. Returns showed that no one district carried Kreisman to victory. Instead, he wrote incremental gains from the primary to a second term. Kreisman especially benefited from his popularity among voters downtown, who turned out in higher numbers on Tuesday, and he also surged in a precinct that covered part of Lake Quid Estates down to Maximo Park. Emblematic of the small shifts in Kreisman's favor were three precincts in West St. Petersburg, around Tyrone and Jungle Prada, where the candidates were separated by just 10 votes with relatively high turnout in the August primary. On Tuesday, about 480 more ballots were cast in those areas, and Kreisman pulled out to an 82-vote lead. The gains added up as Kreisman's margin of victory rose from 70 votes in the primary to 2,190 votes on election day. Baker once again fared well in wealthy bayside areas around Venetian Isles and Shore Acres. Kreisman locked down the Democratic stronghold of Kenwood. The race drew tighter in Midtown and nearby Childs Park, labeled early as battlegrounds by those watching the campaigns. Baker again won the neighborhoods, home to many of the city's impoverished black residents, but by thinner margins Tuesday. Despite a slight uptick in turnout, his lead over Kreisman shrunk by half compared to the primary. Back at Kreisman headquarters, the crowd sang to images of Baker, na 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 na, na 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 na, hey hey, goodbye. Pinellas County School Board member Renee Flowers, a Kreisman supporter, thanked the mayor's supporters for helping turn around what was a very closely contested race back in the August 29 primary. Some people had us counted out in the primary, but those of you who stood firm showed up and showed out, Flowers said. The two candidates likely raised more than $3 million in the race, shattering previous records for a mayor's race in the Sunshine City. The final tally won't be known until next week. All that money led to a flurry of mailers and television and radio ads, many of them negative. Baker's campaign labeled Kreisman as incompetent and repeatedly blamed the city's 2015-16 sewage crisis on his mismanagement. Seamless Florida, a Baker political action committee, also ran a TV ad that brought up the 2001 arrest of Kreisman's chief of staff, Kevin King who was accused of soliciting underage girls. He was never convicted of the charges. A judge sealed the records. King has declined to comment on the case or its disposition. Aside from portraying Baker as an ally of Republican President Donald Trump, 
Kreisman's campaign also hit the former mayor hard on his stance on climate change. Baker said he believed man has played a role in upchanging climate, but he didn't know how much of a role. Kreisman painted Baker as a climate change denier. As the ads went, so did the forums and often explosive arguments exchanged on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Both sides traded accusations and hyperbole with supporters going off on rants. Among actual issues, the city's two-year sewage crisis dominated much of the campaign. Before the primary, the city council approved a $326 million consent decree, giving Baker fodder to blame Kreisman for the imminent raise in utility rates. And in late October, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission delivered a final report saying the city committed 89 felonies while discharging up to 1 billion gallons of waste, 200 million gallons of which ended up above ground, flowing into neighborhoods in the Tampa Bay. Pinellas Pasco State Attorney Bernie McCabe declined to pursue charges because no individual city employees were named in the report. Kreisman's supporters questioned the political timing of the FWC report, just as they did when a draft report surfaced in July that blamed the crisis on recent decisions made during the Kreisman administration and a lack of investment in the city's sewer system going back two decades to the Baker era. With all the back and forth about sewage, neither Kreisman or Baker spent much time talking about their vision of the future. Kreisman's tagline of moving forward, not backward, was short on specifics. Baker talked a lot about his past record as mayor. And both Ricks clearly preferred to rip each other to shreds rather than offer aspirational messages. It wasn't always pleasant, to put it mildly, Kreisman said to his supporters' cheers. Part of their mutual antipathy might have stemmed from a deep familiarity. Kreisman and Baker have known each other for the better part of two decades professionally. They both won their first election on the same night in March 2001, when Baker won his first term as mayor and Kreisman was elected to the city council. After his victory, the re-elected mayor called for healing in a city torn asunder by politics. It is time for this community to come together, Kreisman said. We cannot meet the many challenges that remain if we are divided. Times staff writer Zachary T. Sampson, Nathaniel Lash and Langston Taylor contributed to this report.